Many different compounds in, in cannabis. Two, two of the most common ones are THC, tetrahydrocannabidiol, which is a um, which is a, the stuff that's psychoactive. It makes somebody uh, develop a high. And then CBD cannabidiol is uh, there's there's receptors throughout the body for this particular substance. There's CBD1 receptors, CBD2 receptors. These are the two most common ingredients in in cannabis. CBD, there's been shown for some time now, decades, that it can have a medicinal effect. Specifically, uh, some of the early studies showed on, on convulsive disorders or seizure disorders. CBD is the more medicinal part of, of, of these compounds. One chemical in marijuana, THC, is responsible for the psychoactive effects or the high. It also combats nausea and pain. But another chemical, called CBD, seems to have additional benefits. In San Francisco, these researchers say that compound CBD can kill cancer cells and stop them from metastasizing in human cells and mice. My name is Alan Zupkin. I'm board certified in addiction medicine and I have a practice here in Central Florida. I treat people whose lives have been totally ruined by drugs and alcohol. If I ask my patient population what are their three most common complaints, I hear anxiety, panic attacks, sleep disorders, chronic pain. When I found out about CBD, I was really encouraged because CBD oil is extremely beneficial for those three things. So I said this was a perfect match for my patient population. Another thing as a physician that I really found comforting was that there is a tremendous amount of research that was done on CBD long before the product was available. There is sound science that backs this product up. When any physician hears that there are receptors for CBD in the brain, that it works on the limbic system, which is the brain's emotional system, they can really understand how this can be beneficial to their patients. Other benefits apparently are anti-inflammatory effects. There are reports about its early research use in treating cancer. There are many patients that have social anxiety disorder. CBD would play an important role in treating them. There are neuroprotective effects of CBD, so we're really just at the start of research to understand all the different ways that this product can be used. So I'm really excited about using it and happy for the opportunity to offer it to my patients. Pe people with social anxiety disorder have extreme fear of getting into social situations. They have difficulty approaching people, they have difficulty going out shopping or going to malls, anywhere there's other people, they have extreme fear of that situation. So a lot of people learn to medicate to cope with that problem. Having a natural product that would help them in that situation would really reap benefits for them. So I'm really excited about that use. And the truth is it's a very common disorder. One of the reasons that people are trying to legalize medical marijuana in this country is for its CBD content. This product, which is sold as a supplement, is legal in all 50 states and in fact is being used worldwide because there is no THC in this product and, and therefore the negative effects of THC getting high, getting munchies, having paranoia are simply not found with this product. One of, the, one of the other benefits of CBD is that in a small percentage of people who smoke marijuana who have certain genetics they actually develop schizophrenia. CBD can act to counteract that problem and it's used as an antipsychotic. It can repair brain damage. In addition, uh, people that have psoriasis and other skin disorders can benefit from topical application of CBD. More than half the states in the union now have legalized medical marijuana. But did you know that you do not have to get high to consume it? and that it is helping some folks avoid the opioid vortex altogether. 
So many people have questions about medical pot and have no idea who to ask or still feel uncomfortable even doing it. Enter the Knox family, all doctors practicing conventional medicine until they saw a need in their community. Watch this. Meet the Knox family. A family of MDs, but how these doctors treat patients might surprise you. The cannabis is really helping. They counsel on cannabis. We call what we do in the clinics integrative cannabinoid medicine because we know that cannabis is not the thing that's helping people heal. It is a tool that helps the body really heal itself. All of these people had either failed conventional medicine or conventional medicine had failed them. Janice was asked to fill in at a medical marijuana center in Portland, Oregon. Of course, I had my preconceived notions about people who used marijuana. They just wanted to get high and be stoners. But when I went there, who I saw totally just rocked my conventional medicine world. I was so enthralled that I just started learning. Meanwhile, their daughters were graduating from medical school with MDs and MBAs. At first, I was sort of like, eh, mom's doing something crazy again. <laughs> um, but, but as she continued to talk to us about the patients she was seeing and the changes she was seeing in these patients from using cannabis medicine, I think both Rachel and I sort of got hooked. Oh, like look at the changes that are happening in these patients that in a primary care clinic we weren't seeing with our own patients. Their clinic helps answer questions from what form to take medical marijuana in. I'm trying new products now. To how much. Reducing the THC that you take. Yeah. They see patients of all ages and ailments from cancer. Chronic neck pain. Yes. To chronic pain. Even a 15-month-old baby with an inoperable brain tumor named Daxton Olson. We went through the YS phase for so long. The doctors told us that there was nothing in their arsenal to shrink the tumor. Daxton was put on a chemotherapy regimen, but after three months of treatments and some complications, the tumor had grown. Daxton also suffered from daily seizures. It's such a weird thing to even consider as a parent, like, am I really going to give my three-month-old son cannabis? And then as soon as we got, on, got him on cannabis, we did another three months of chemotherapy, and his tumor shrunk 26%. His seizures have gone down from 15 a day to one every two weeks. Hi, Look at you. You've grown so much. Daxton's <laughs> doctors told us they credit the chemotherapy for shrinking his tumor but say they can't rule out that the cannabis is also helping. Little one. More conventional thought is that uh, cannabis could be used as a last resort, but I really firmly believe there's a number of conditions that it should be your first resort. The doctors of our generation, we want to be bold and courageous, and the changes that cannabis does make in people's lives even more compelling for us as people who want to be healers. Wow. Janice, Rachel, Jessica, and David Knox, welcome to you all. Thank you so much for being here. A family full of doctors. We got a bunch of doctors here. All right, so let me start with you on this, Janice. You, you don't prescribe medical marijuana, so describe what you do. Well, it's still federally, federally illegal, so we're not allowed to prescribe the plant. However, we are allowed to assess patients for their medical conditions, and if they have a condition that qualifies them to get a state-issued uh, medical marijuana card, then we can do that. But with that, we have to examine their records, examine the patient, just the usual things we do with conventional medicine. We still have to perform those tasks. Mm -hmm. how, how unique is this, Rachel? How unique is this service that you guys are doing? Oh, extraordinarily unique. You know, before we got started, patients could go to a clinic and get a card. They would get evaluated. evaluated. It might take five to 10 minutes. Um, but what we decided to do, because patients have so many questions on what to use, how to use it, when to use it, we started counseling them on their use, um, using the very pragmatic in information that we were able to glean from the current trials and studies that have been done mm -hmm. um, to help really narrow um, and, and more define how they're using that plant so that they can get meaningful outcomes. So you, you're... Mom and dad come home one day, Jessica, and they're like, we're going into the pot business? Yeah. Or like, what? How was that explained to you from the mom who, who used to be like, they're just stoners who want to get high? How did that woman transform into this woman? Yeah, you know, she's always been revolutionary. You know, she'll, she loves to talk about how she was a, a graduate of UC Berkeley, which is a revolutionary school. And so we were in residency, and she would call us and talk to us about the work she was doing in these clinics. 
Um, and I, I wasn't surprised that she was doing something unusual. This is a woman who, in 2007, was mining Bitcoin in the basement. No way. You know, she's, she's always <laughs> been doing something that's on the cutting edge. Um, and so, and she's smart. She's brilliant. And so listening to her and the conviction she had and... Uh, and the patients that she was taking care of, um, you know, we didn't we didn't brush it off as just something mom is doing crazy again. Yeah, uh, there was something there, um, and that that we experienced as we started reading about it, listening to her experiences, talking to patients ourselves. There was something there. Okay, so there's so many questions. When we come back, do you have to get stoned to use medical marijuana? And is it dangerous? And we're back now with the Knox family, a family of doctors who specialize in medical marijuana, and they're trying to educate the public and change people's perceptions about this drug. David, let me ask you, because you're an ER physician as well, right? That's correct. So what, you know, our moms told us, it's going to ruin your brain. Yeah. Like, don't do any sort of marijuana. So is that still true? Well, you know, you only have uh, one line on your medical record to record cannabis use, and that's drugs of abuse. So um, I'd have to say in my 40 years in the emergency room, I've seen every day opiate problems, alcohol problems. Uh, maybe I can count two hands, truly cannabis problems. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's very unusual. It's uh, such, I mean, it can help. We've seen, especially with the seizure disorders, uh, mm -hmm. it helps so many people. But, you know, there's still a stigma attached to it. But, I mean, how did you, you were brought up in the, in the same way I was, right? Yes. Which is like, it's... Absolutely. Like, we, we had the groups in our school. It was like the swelts and the creamies and the dirties and the jocks. <laughs> and the dirties were the ones who did pot. That's, so yes. it was associated in my mind with like, oh, those are the kids who are on drugs. They're on drugs. Correct, correct. You know, and I grew up the same way, very religious family. If you even whispered the word drug, you were going to go to hell. But I tell you, once I read the science behind cannabis, which is not cannabis, actually. It's a, it's a, a system in our bodies called the endocannabinoid system that all of us have. And it's true science. It's true physiology. And when I understood what that physiology meant and how cannabis could affect that physiology. And it really is about that physiology, not cannabis, because there's other herbs out there that have cannabinoid-like activities. But once you understand that, then you realize we really have something valuable here that we have all been cheated out of. Mm -hmm. Right, well, because obviously it was recreational drug and right. used in a different way long before people started to consider it medically. Um, what about that? Do you have to get stoned? I mean, I think a lot of people don't want to get stoned, but they'd like some of the medical benefits of it. People think they have to toke up a bong or something. They don't. Have they... I mixed my... No. I think I've no. mixed... I don't know if you choke a bong. Okay, sorry. You did. You did. Well. You, okay. did, well. you, did. you did. And, and no, the overwhelming majority of our patients tell us they don't want to get high right out the gate. They're just, they just want to solve their, their medical problem. How do they take it in? What are the options that they oh, use? A variety. So everybody's familiar with inhaling, toking the bond, as you might <laughs> <Thank> say. <you. laughs> Again, um, but inhaling through, uh, you know, a joint or a vaporizer. But most people don't even want to inhale. So we're talk talking about topical applications. People can rub into their joints. We're talking about tinctures that you can drop under your tongue or. And it doesn't make you gums. fuzzy headed, or it doesn't give you those other Not effects. Not necessarily. Wow. You know, we have to talk to patients about their ratios or their chemical profiles, which we call chemo profiles. And we talk to them about how much. Tea THC versus how much CBD and other molecules that they'll need to avoid that. High. That's what that's the business you're in right now. So right. how do you figure out who really needs it and who is who is just looking for a high? Who's there to sort of abuse the system? Yeah, sometimes. Well, so the states, first of all, have guidelines. So most states actually, uh, you know, enumerate the conditions for which cannabis can be recommended. So in those states, we're specifically recommending it to people who have those conditions. Um, and in states where it's not so obvious if, if the patient has a condition that, you know, might be appropriate or not, you really just talk to the patient and figure out what they want. They'll tell you. I think the first thing so many of our patients say to us is, I don't want to get high. This is the wave yeah. of the future, though. I mean, this is, it's been legalized in so many states. We're more than half now, mm -hmm. 29 plus Puerto Rico and Guam. Um, and obviously, recreational use is getting legalized in more and more states as well. So you, I think you might be, once again, on the cutting edge. Bitcoin... Mm -hmm to <laughs> mar marijuana <laughs> advising. Thank you all for telling your story. All the best. Thanks for Thank you. We'll be right back. <laughs>